I know we're back. We're back with uh, Julie Crockett from the Evan General, and I've been wanting to ask you this for a long time. This looks, looks like Pace the Light. So give me light. Okay, good. Light's better. Okay, so she's she is a uh, former perfect Julie is a former professional uh, boxer. Undefeated. Undefeated. You, you did like how many fights for you? Three and zero. Two KOs. Okay. Yeah. 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 And this, also the LA District Champion and the National Champion as an amateur. Such a lovely face, and you would never guess that she was like duking down. Good defense. Good defense. Yeah, really. Um, but but you were the you were the uh, uh, inspiration for the Hillary Swank character in the movie Billion Dollar Baby. And not a lot of people know that. That's not like I don't know. People, it's been it's been out there. But um, but tell us. Well, the character was an amalgam of several things. It was a real story of a girl who was actually in like an Ultimate Fighting Championship who hit her head and became paralyzed. So he took that, and then he took aspects of, of other people. But a lot of the some of the character aspects of he said you know, her perseverance that she started late that she came from the south. I mean, I didn't have. Oh, you came from Alabama, right? Oh, yeah, I was born We're in Alabama, Alabama in Coffee County Enterprise. Coffee County, okay. But I did not have a super dysfunctional family or a crazy mom. We like, in a trailer that park. Yeah. That was not my story. I was like a, a PhD student when he met me, but I was also boxing. Like, yeah, and you, you came to LA and you told me one time that you were, you, 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 you could take two paths at the time. You were in LA, you said, and you wanted to um, fit in the scene. You could either go to the gym and work out and start stripping, or you could go to the gym and work out and become a boxer. My, my background was in experimental theater, so I wanted to get my finger on the experimental theater pulse of Los Angeles and the two most far away things from who I am as a person that I could think to do because at the time I was this incredibly shy, overweight, you know, pasty theater director from New York. So I was, my first idea was like, oh, I'll become a stripper because that would just be crazy. But I started training at the YMCA and had, and took boxing lessons to get in shape and I had a trainer named Mickey Jones who was this amazing like poet, prophet, storyteller, preacher, boxing coach and he suggested that I take boxing seriously because I showed a lot of promise. So then I went to a, a, a gym and started training in with the amateurs and had a really great amateur team and, and won a lot of awards. And then I went, when I turned pro, I started training with a man named Dub Huntley. And who, who wrote the... Uh, no, Dub Huntley no. was my trainer. Okay. The, the book, the, the book of short stories, is called Rope Burns, that the Million Dollar Baby short story appears in. And it was written, the pen name is FX Tool, but it was written by a man named Jerry Boyd, who was Dub's best friend. Um, there's actually a story in there called Black Jew, and that's about Dub. And in the in the story of Million Dollar Baby, the characters in the movie would have been inverted because Dub was this uh, is, would be like the Morgan Freeman character, where he was just this incredibly angel-hearted old black man who trained, you know, lots and lots of champions. He was Layla Ali's trainer, in fact, as well. And he, but he was actually the trainer. Where in the movie Morgan Freeman is the cut man, and Jerry was my cut man. Who he was, if you got cut, he would be the person to fix yeah. your eye, and was a corner man. And he would have been the Clint Eastwood character, but he inverted the characters because he wanted to be the trainer. Okay, so this movie, Story. Million Dollar Babies, won an Academy Award sure. for. Um, I think it won Best Picture, and I think Hillary yeah. Swank yeah. got Best Actress. I think. Yeah, yeah, and you never got mentioned. She didn't no, say well, thank what had happened? Was, like, well, what had happened was Jerry wrote the short story, and then it was years later that um, I mean, a couple of years later, I think it got options to be a motion picture, and when they were starting to make the movie. He had sent um, pictures of me and my fight tapes and information about me to the producers because he was like, this is the girl, the, you know, this is a million dollar baby. And actually we were supposed to meet with them and there was talk of me actually being in the movie. But then um, I was prepping for a fight and I didn't have time to meet and Jerry actually had a heart attack and ended up in a coma for three weeks and he died. So, I mean, I just kind of went on boxing. I retired from boxing. I didn't think anything of it. And then when the movie came out, I hadn't seen it yet. But all these people started calling me and they were like, oh my God, did you see this movie? She's like, she looks like you and she wears her hair like you and she's got all the same shorts as you. Yeah, yeah. And then like in Dub, even my trainer was like, they must have had spies in the gym because there are conversations and lines of dialogue about the training, which are literally conversations that Dub and I had. Okay, so this is great. The, 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 your trainer was the scriptwriter. Now, who was the scriptwriter? Jerry, who was 
my corner. Man. And he died? And he died. He died of a heart attack, okay. Yeah, he and, died. And in the movie, you, you were saying this before we started on uh, video, that the, the script drive would have been corresponding to Clint Eastwood's character or? My, Jared, the writer would have been Clint Eastwood's character and my trainer would have been the cut man, but those roles were inverted because in the, in the, in the uh, movie, Morgan Freeman isn't the trainer. Like, in my life, the black dude was the trainer and the white dude was the corner man. Okay, okay. So, yeah, wow. and then it came out because when uh, the movie was about to come out, uh, or was up for an Academy Award and all that was going on, actually Sports Illustrated was doing a story about Million Dollar Baby and was interviewing my trainer, Dub, and I wasn't even boxing anymore. I had retired. I had started the band. I was doing other stuff. And you're going to school. And, She's and a doctor. School. Doctor of philosophy. Um, and they, Sports Illustrated, called Dub and was like, as like a throwaway last question, they were like, oh, by the way, is there a real Million Dollar Baby? And he said, yes, Julie, everybody knows that. And I'm I'm sitting at work. I had a job at the time. I was working in the adult toy company. Like, oh, yeah, that's right, the stock room. Was she, she was also like in charge of like porn <laughs> products at the stock room on Sons of Bulma. And I'm just at work, and all of a sudden the phone starts ringing. Actually, at least was a thing. I'm at work, and they're like, suddenly it's like Sports Illustrated is calling, and then it was US News, and then it was uh, Extra, and then it was like Entertainment Weekly, and all these people started calling because they were like, oh my god, there's a real million dollar baby. And at the time, I mean, it's funny because in hindsight, I probably we could have like played the situation a whole lot more, but I just really downplayed it. I was like, no, 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 it's fine. Too cool, like, too cool. like, no, 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 I don't want to talk about it. Because I mean, for me, it was all really tied up too. With the, I mean, it was just so unfortunate that that Jerry, as a writer, like, well, it was like right when his work was finally great. getting that kind of acclaim and attention, yeah. and it was getting turned into a movie, and it was just so. It I mean, it's wonderful that, that I mean his his work has gotten to carry on in that way. But and we it. used to argue about the story all the time because I personally hated it. I thought that it was, I did not like the storyline, I did not like, because he was actually very much against women boxing, and that whole story is his justification for why women shouldn't fight, and it's all about him, and it's all about him, it's all about, he's going to meet a girl, and then he's going to care, and something's going to happen to her, and he's going to have to kill her, and his Irish Catholic self is going to go to hell, because he had to, like, help somebody do an assisted suicide, and I found it so unfair that it couldn't be a story like a Rocky or any other story where it was like actually a woman in charge of her own destiny. So it's pretty sexual. It is, because in the story, I mean, he says whether she can train or not, he says whether she can fight or not, and he says whether she can live or die. And I was like, that's bullshit. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you've lived that life, you, you're undefeated, you, you're, a, you're a scholar now, you're a doctor, you're a mom, you're a homeowner in Los Angeles, you got a yeah. good band and everything. And that was the like compliment, worth, worth the big compliment in boxing when you're accomplished as a woman is that you fight like a man. What's your take on that? Well, I think, I mean, I think I understand the sentiment, but I also understand that that sentiment, like, has to change. I mean, there was just that great, like, video with Serena Williams about, like, playing tennis like a woman. It's like, I think we're moving beyond the point where it's like, people have yeah. expressed that they can be completely capable athletes. Regardless of gender. Didn't something happen in like 2012 or 2013, right before Ronda Rousey got big, you know, it's like, um, oh, Olympics. Women can fight in the Olympics yeah. now, isn't that right? Yeah, that, that was a recent and you're, addition. you're probably a part of that whole revolution, I bet. I mean, a lot. You, I mean, you, a lot you were part are. of that whole, that yeah. whole step towards it. And it's like, amazing. And yeah. now a woman can even be president. What? Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. Who am I making for the White House? Good time. It's a good time to be a woman. Well, thank you, Julie. I'll let you get back to your family and everything. So, yeah. Yay! Okay. All right. Talk to you soon.